Welcome to a new vlog. Today I want to talk about solder bridges and show you how to deal with them. A solder bridge can happen for many reasons, incorrect soldering temperature, incorrect amount of solder being used, too little or no flux, or just the incorrect technique for soldering. But they all basically mean the same thing, a blob of solder shorting two or more conductive surfaces on your PCB. Modern printed circuit boards which typically get solder mass coverage even between IC pins will help prevent this problem because molten solder normally doesn't stick to the solder mass surface and so it's harder to form a bridge across that surface. But even with enough experience and the proper technique, solder bridges can still happen if you do hand soldering on fine pitch ICs. It's just part of the soldering job. It's true that as you get better at soldering, they will happen less often but don't think they will go away forever. So it's good to know how to deal with them in everyday soldering. I have prepared a couple of uh, PCBs with uh, some solder bridges. I have one with leaded solder and one with lead free solder because uh, these two alloys can behave differently. You will need a few tools and supplies to uh, get this job done. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. So uh, let's start with the flux. It's probably the most uh, important thing to get this job right and it's important to have good quality flux. For example, I am using the Amtech uh, 559V2 gel flux and I consider this to be one of the best fluxes you can get. That is if you get the genuine stuff. If you got it from AliExpress or eBay then you got the fake stuff which still works but is not as efficient and the residue it leaves behind is nasty and hard to clean. So if possible try to get the Amtech genuine stuff from a known distributor. It will be 10 times more expensive than what you get on AliExpress but it's totally worth it. Alternatively instead of getting the fake Amtech from AliExpress you are better off getting some of this uh, mechanic brand flux because well, it works fine and they don't try to uh, trick you into thinking you got something else. So I will put a link to this in the description below so you can check it out. The next thing you will need is some solder wick and uh, these come in different uh, widths. Same as with the flux, it is important to get the good stuff from a known distributor because it will have real copper wires impregnated with good flux that will suck the solder away better than the fake stuff you can get for cheap on AliExpress and eBay. If possible, try to get the genuine stuff from a known distributor, it will make your life easier. Alternatively, instead of getting the uh, fake good wick from AliExpress, you're better off getting some mechanic brand solder wick, uh, same as with the flux. It works fine and they don't try to trick you into thinking you, you are buying something else. So I will uh, put a link to this in the description below. Obviously, you're going to need a uh, temperature adjustable soldering iron. Today, I'll uh, use my TS100 soldering iron uh, and I've... Uh, uh, done a review of this soldering iron i will link it on screen right now you'll definitely need something to clean the soldering iron tip so uh, you can go with the basic uh, wet sponge method or you can get one of these uh, brass uh, sponges which i prefer because it doesn't uh, provide the temperature shock to the soldering tip uh, as in case of the wet sponge when fixing solder bridges you typically uh, want a large tip to cover a larger area and uh, be capable of transferring enough heat into the solder wick. I find that uh, these uh, type of tips work best when uh, trying to fix solder bridges. The temperature uh, you will be using needs to be higher than the normal soldering temperature to compensate for the uh, solder wick sucking some of that heat away because it really acts like a heat sink with all of those uh, copper wires. Um, for example, if you're normally soldering at 270 degrees Celsius, I would typically go up to 300 degrees uh, when using the uh, solder wick just to compensate for that uh, temperature uh, heat dissipation. Now depending on the skills you have, the type of soldering iron tip, how good your flux is, how much solder you have on your bridge, you might be able to wick it away without using any solder wick just with the soldering iron tip. 
making use of a thing called surface tension. Surface tension is the tendency of fluid surfaces to shrink into the minimum surface area possible. And this works in our advantage, helping us wick the solder away from the bridge. With repeated tries and cleaning the soldering iron tip before the next try, it might be possible to fix a solder bridge without using any solder wick, just flux and your soldering iron. But be careful, repeatedly hitting that pad or pin with this method might cause damage to the IC or PCB pad, so don't overdo it. And in general, it's good advice to not use a higher temperature than what is needed. If you start needing higher temperatures, then you might be having a soldering iron problem or the tip might not be the proper one for the job and it's not transferring the heat to the board very efficiently. And this is how it's done with the solder wick. Apply some flux, place the solder wick over the bridge and carefully heat with the soldering iron. The solder wick should start sucking the solder as it gets filled with solder, you will need to feed in some fresh solder wick. You shouldn't need too much pressure, just enough to transfer the heat to the pad. Applying too much heat could damage the IC pins or PCB pad and you might need to apply a slight motion in the solder wick to catch all of the uh, solder but don't overdo it because dragging the solder wick while hot over the IC pins or PCB pads has this abrasive action and uh, could uh, eventually damage those so try to apply as little force as possible. The key here is to suck the solder without overheating the component or PCB and without applying too much uh, force to uh, avoid mechanically stressing the IC. Once the solder bridge has been removed, sometimes there is too little solder left to ensure a reliable connection. If that's the case, apply some more flux if needed and feed in some fresh solder. If you are dealing with lead-free solder, it might be harder to fix a solder bridge because the lack of lead in the solder makes it melt at higher temperature. If you are, for example, repairing a board and you don't care about leaded solder, then I would recommend adding some leaded solder to the joint and let it mix with the original solder. This way, it can make it much easier to work on that solder joint because the fresh leaded solder will mix with the old lead-free solder and lower the overall melting temperature. Now, if you are forced to work with lead-free because you are reworking some commercial product that will be sold and it needs to be lead-free, then it's just a matter of using a higher temperature on the soldering iron and enough flux. Eventually, you should get the job done. I'm not sure if there is uh, anything more I could say about fixing uh, solder bridges. I think that was all for today. I hope you learned something interesting from this video. Solder bridges are a part of the manual soldering process and it's important to know how to deal with them. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll respond to each and every one. I'll see you next week with a new video.